in time of need. Look what Gary brought me. Look at this. A purple asparaga, and I'm going to eat that. Yes, I know, Kitty. We found that you like green beans last night. Raw green beans. Well, I might share just a little bit. This is my breakfast. I haven't had breakfast. Yep, you know what you want. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday today, March 27th, I believe. And today I'm even in a better mood. Let's see, let's touch on the day and then I wanna go on with my day. If you can see, I am now not sitting by my sliding glass doors looking out, but I am outside in my garden. You'll see it on the garden tour. Yesterday, Gary and I walked through the garden and I said to him, gee, I would like to move this, I think. This is why I have to be very careful when I say that. And the moment I said, I'd like to move this and do this and do that, he started ripping up all my tubs. He's got this thing where he says he's got to do it quick before he changed my mind. And I'm going to tell you, it looks so cool. I'm so happy with that. And that's not actually what's making me really happy. But, um, but anyway, see, I'm sitting by my table. I'm sitting outside. The birds are all over here. Listen, they're singing. Isn't that beautiful? So I'm freezing. My hands are like ice. I'm holding my camera and it's so cold. It's, um, it's about 8.30. 8 o'clock I went outside. I could not believe it. You talk, you see fog out of your mouth and it's 40 degrees. This is why I can't get squash growing and certain things growing yet outside. I've done some test seeds. But we're getting close. But I just don't remember it being... 40 degrees except for last year we had a cool really cool winter and I'm hoping it's going to warm up but all in all everything is doing good and the reason I'm excited is I managed to get an online order come in and because of the way I'm ordering now and you have to pay the one company I went through you had to pay ten dollars and no I'm not signed up with anybody anymore I signed up with Walmart I couldn't get orders through every time I put an order they canceled everything so I had that trial, so I gave that up, and I have maybe an order coming today, but I'm not sure. But it doesn't matter. We still have a lot, you know, that we're using now from the garden, but my big concern were the birds. So I put in an order for three 50-pound sacks of C&H uh, sugar cane, cane sugar, because I have done it before and they just said they were out. They haven't had sugar. I must have put it in at the most perfect time because they had it. I didn't put anything on the order. That's the only thing I put on the order. And the reason I did it that way is what they do is, let's say I put in and I wanted, I don't know, let's say I did want the three uh, sacks of sugar. They're 50 pounds each. And then I put in tortillas, let's say. And this, is, this hasn't quite happened, but almost. It did kind of happen. Half my order only came. I would end up paying $10 shipping, plus the driver tip, plus the fee that they, uh, this particular company has. And I would end up with just tortillas. So I only put in the three sacks of sugar I wanted. And lo and behold, guy didn't even message me. I didn't get a message on my phone. I was working um, online doing something. And all of a sudden, I get a photo sent to my, camp, my uh, phone, and it shows the, the 150 pound sacks out front, of, out front in the street. But it was good. It was perfect. Uh, I ran out there, got Gary, and Gary put him off to the side. We don't have to touch him or do anything. He handled them with gloves. That's what we're supposed to do here. And we handled them. He handled them with gloves. He brought him in and put him to the side because we still have a lot of sugar to use, but now I won't run out. And the reason I was frantic over that was I have no idea how many gallons a day I'm going through now for the hummingbirds. The hummingbirds are feeding so many babies. I've got to get this video put together on what's going on right now on the house that I've never seen before. There, I've got one that built two nests and she's serving two nests. I've never seen that in a hummingbird. I've seen it in other birds, but I've never seen it in a hummingbird. So she is servicing two nests. And this is probably the reason we have so many. We've got thousands and thousands coming in at night feeding i did a live show the other I, I don't like calling it a show a live feed that's what i should call it the other day and they didn't want to come because i had set the window up different the regulars the locals will come in they don't care and that's beautiful 
they'll come in and feed. But the new ones coming in that are migrating through, it's like, I'm not going to go that crazy woman's window when she's got stuff. Ha it's tool. I had tool hanging in front of the window, so they wouldn't come in the house. So when I shut the cameras off, it was amazing how many came in. It was just the window was black with the hummingbirds, just black. And they were all waiting their turn. No fighting, no nothing. And I had more and more feeders I was putting out. And they all fed because they... A few of them were feeding even as the sun had already gone down. It was amazing. But they fed, and then they're back. I've got a hummingbird right now in the bird bath. But anyways, that really got me so excited. So now I've got sugar. It should last me for a while. Let's see what else is going on. My brother. Oh, that's right. So I ran out to get the sugar, and then my phone rang. I didn't know who it was, and it was my brother FaceTiming me. Okay, I'm old-fashioned. And this was new to me. The only one I've ever FaceTimed was Gary. And he had to do it with uh, a different phone because his phone won't FaceTime. But, um, yeah, he FaceTimed me. So we got that together and we worked on that as Gary was loading in the sugar. And now we can get my mom and dad. My mother wants to tell jokes. She said, you know, with everything going on, she can't sleep at night. She told me. And I don't blame her. I think a lot of us are going through that. And this is gorgeous. Oh, those ravens. Oh, I got to keep an eye on that. That's another story I'll get into in a minute. Um, so she says at night she lays up and tells herself jokes. She was always fascinated with movies, and I think she would have loved to have been, done something like that one day. She tried seeing if any of her kids wanted to get involved in movies. None of us did. Nah, I, I was a nature lover. My sister's more in, uh, she likes editorial stuff. Yeah, my brother's more business-like, so... No, none of her kids want to get into the movies. But she just loves telling jokes. And they love her at, uh, she goes to the VA hospital. And, and, you know, up until all this happened, my parents both still were running and working with the bingo at the VA hospital and bagging up candy and cookies and stuff for, for them every month. It was It's amazing what my parents do. And keep in mind, my dad is, you know, they're World War II vets. My dad's a World War II vet. So anyways, that's what go was going on. So hopefully we can get that together real, real soon. So let's see. We did my garden. And I worked around the bathtub where the deer came in. That's almost done. Not done. Not done. But working on it. We got, I've got the fountain working good. I dragged this statue my neighbor gave me. Actually, what she did was, one of my neighbors, I was going down the hill this before all this started, and she had in front this big bear holding a fish. And I went to the store, and I came home, and I called. I just love all these birds. It's really so beautiful. And they're like feet from me. I'm sitting in the garden now with them. I'm keeping an eye on that raven that's flying around. I'll get to that again in a second. Um, I called them. I said, you dragged a bear out in the street. This great big three, four foot tall bear. What are you doing with that? And he said, oh, her son answered. My mom doesn't want it in the yard anymore. I said, if you're throwing that thing away, I'm coming down. He said, oh, please take it. We'd love to know you took it. So Gary and I ran down there. We, oh, the ravens are coming in. I may have to get Gary in a minute. Shut the camera off. Um, so, anyways, long story short, no, it's not even a long story. We went down there. We got it. It's got a couple things that needs patched up, and that was going to be a thing that Gary was going to do. And we're got, not going to patch it up right now. We've got too many other things we want to do instead. This is what I'm concerned about, and that's why I'm stalling. The ravens are coming in. I'm going to have to keep an eye on this. But anyways, um, he was going to patch it up and do a video how he's going to fix it because it's kind of, um, it's probably originally fiberglass, some sort of mold, and then it's got like cement or however they make it, plaster over it. It's really cute. You'll see it on my garden tour. But anyways, with everything going on, we're doing other things now. I need a sip of coffee. So I drag that over there very carefully, and I do wear my garden gloves when I'm gardening. Occasionally I come out here and start to pull things, and I forget, and, and don't want to do that. Okay, the reason I'm concerned about the ravens, let me do this story as quick as I can. Um, every year the ravens do come around here, and they must build a nest in the trees up there. I, I'm not sure where their nest is. I've never gone and looked for it, but... They kind of own the property around here. They'll even chase off the coyotes and they'll chase off everything. Well, this particular year, and I should say last month, the Cooper Hawks came in 
And we have had small hawks nest here, but never big hawks nest here. And the Cooper hawks that are always here, they came in, found the area, the garden. They probably can find a lot of rodents and th things that they eat. And so they took over the property. I want you to notice something else. We're in the flight path of different airports and we have no planes flying over right now. It's We used to have it constantly and there's almost no planes. It's, the whole time me sitting here, there hasn't been a single plane. The planes have been cut down to, I'm gonna say close to 10%. But anyways, not cut 10%, down that much, 10%. So anyways, we were working in the garden doing this big change in my garden that didn't take us that long, maybe a half hour to an hour. And uh, as I was saying, the Cooper Hawks came in this year and they built, they built their nest. I just found it recently. I brought it up on my last garden tour. I was so surprised. And she's sitting there in the mail. She's sitting in that big pepper tree. And the male and her take turns all day. Well, yesterday we were out here and a pair, probably regular ravens, came in. Now, I know your raven lovers won't care, but, you know, it bothered me just because. They came in and they started to attack the cooper hawk and probably the male. So he tried to chase them off, the pair, mind you, and he did. He chased off the one and the second raven sat up in the, on the pole, just sat there waiting. It was the weirdest thing. And I thought, okay, so they split up the pair. Within minutes, the original raven that took off came back with close to 50 ravens. I got the tail end on my camera and I'll try to maybe put it on the garden tour if I talk about it. But what we did was, we didn't know what to do. And we started screaming, 50 ravens came in and they went to attack the tree. So Gary and I ran down to the other side of the yard, banging and clapping and making noise so they would think that maybe, because people do shoot at them, I guess, in different areas, thinking that maybe somebody was shooting them, just banging, bang, 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 real loud. And we actually drove the ravens off. I was about ready to get the hose out too. If we weren't here yesterday, that Cooper Hawk, the nest, the rave, that, those 50 ravens that came in here, they would have torn the nest apart and probably killed the Cooper Hawks if they could. But they've left, but they still do circle around. So they're nesting somewhere else. There's plenty of places for them to nest. They've got the whole canyon. They've got all these trees. But, you know, ravens are like that. And yes, I know a lot of people love ravens. I don't mind them. But, you know, the Cooper Hawk is done. She's got her nest done. The babies are probably going to hatch soon, the chicks. And it was, it was a sight to see and terrifying. For me, it was terrifying. But they didn't get the Cooper's Hawk. They're still up there, and I hope everything will be okay. What they usually do, the ravens, is if they do build around here, and I think the reason they do is there are people that have chickens that run loose, and they go to my neighbors, the ravens, and they go in there and they steal all her chicken eggs. And on top of that, the eggs that they miss or didn't see, let's say they were hiding in bushes, the chickens sitting on their eggs, they come in and they kill all the babies. And then they drop them because they're not even just eating them. They're, it's, kind of, it's almost a sport with them. And then they'll just drop the baby chicks all over and you'll find either eggs dropped or baby chicks dropped. It's... So they probably wanted to nest here because they have a simple food source because they know where they can go get things to eat like that, you know, baby chicks and eggs. Anyways, so the good thing is right now they didn't succeed and I'm hoping that we chased them off enough where they think that it's not a good thing here. But that's it. I have actually been working in the garden. I'm going to work today. I want to get some more lettuce planted. I, I can't get over how beautiful. I'm going to show you a little sneak peek. Look at this. It's, it's clean. I should turn around and show you. I really should. But I want to talk about it on the garden. Well, you know what? It's not done. All right. Real quick, because it's not done. Been moving things, and these are not going to stay there. This is a tree collar cutting from my own that I put in here. We moved that, and I do want to clean all this up. But look at this. This has all been changed here. You probably can't appreciate it on camera, and I'm not going to step back yet because I don't know what's behind me. I want to plant something in there, not sure yet what. Look at that. But when you walk in the gate now, it just, it's so clean and it's so beautiful. You walk in and you've got all these tubs here. Now I can service and get to them. I had all this stuff before up against the sliding glass door here. I couldn't get back here. 
So it's all cleaned up really nice. So I'm really excited with that. Now, and I trim back my lemon verbena and I can direct it up, up into the window if I want. And then this was something I was gonna cut down. It's just a, look at this. It's just a dinosaur kale, but look how tall it grew. Well, now I'm gonna leave it. That's gonna be beautiful. Absolutely, be the birds can come there and land on that if they want. And then this is just cuttings from sprouting broccoli. These are actually cuttings. I might take some of those out and repot them in bigger pots and clean this up. So hopefully it'll be cleaned up a little bit more before I do the garden tour. But it's just so amazing when you walk in now. And now I can wash up the table and clean this all up. And I'm going to continue to the garden. The whole idea of my garden, I don't want to make this a garden tour. It's just a morning hello. Is um, I need to be able to service and get to everything simple. That's the whole idea. I don't want to be climbing anymore behind things. And I lost a lot of zucchini back there, way back there, because I've got tubs up against the fence, and I can't get back there. Everything grows so big that um, I just cannot get back there. So that's what I'm going to do, trim out. I want to be able to get to everything, and then I can quickly come out here, grab what I need, and then go make something to eat. So that's it. We're, we're, everything is good. We're staying home today. I'm going to get some more planting done today. I've got some online stuff I've got to do today. So that's going to take time. And Gary's doing his everyday chores around here. I mean, our life is very different. And I know everybody's life is very different right now, but we'll see how things go. And um, we'll get my mom on and do, hopefully do some more live feeds over the weekend. And say hello to everybody. So with that, I'm going back to get my stuff done. I wanted to just come out here. I try to come out here in the morning because it really is a big stress reliever to come out here, fill the feeders, and watch the birds. And they're not all coming in right now because I'm standing up moving around. But there's so many birds I've seen species again that I haven't seen since last year. So it's really exciting. And this is just... And I do want to get this video up too on how I made that fountain. The panel is just starting, so it's just starting to bubble. That that fountain down there is just, for me, so exciting. I absolutely love it. So that's it. And that was a beautiful yesterday, too. That's a simple one. Anybody can make a solar fountain out of this. This is, I'll get into that, but you know what that is? That's a toy. That's a kid's globe that I found, oh, years ago. I think somebody threw it away, and I split it in half, and I made a fountain out of it. It's just a, like a globe, a world globe. We'll get into all this. I'll show each one. I'll put some videos together so it gives you ideas. You may have something around the house you can use. So with that, oh, one more thing I wanted to touch on before I say good day for right now. Um, I did put up, you know, an update on if I might do these daily. If you want them daily, I will. But somebody, a regular, came in and said, oh, Robbie, I didn't know you buy seeds from China. That is not at all what I said. I never have ever purchased any seeds from out of the country. I have nothing on my property that I know of that came from out of the country. And I want to emphasize that greatly, that I know of. I've done so much research this past year on so many things that I have not even talked about. And things, you know, where they come from. Keep in mind that if something is said to come from, let's say, I don't even want to say any other country, that only means that's the last country that somebody bought it from. But it doesn't mean that's even where it came from. It could have come from another country, sold to another country, and then let's say we buy it, let's say from France, but it may not have come originally from France. Okay, going back to the seeds. I, that's a whole topic I don't want to get into. Going back to the seeds, I have never purchased any seeds from China. The seeds that I have been purchasing from people I thought were heirloom, they were stated heirloom. Heirloom is heirloom. It doesn't mean where they're coming from. That doesn't say they're U.S. It just says heirloom. I thought they were from here. What I have since found out, and this is a lot of people, but not everybody, a lot of seed that you're growing is bought in bulk from other countries. And this is what I learned on one of John Kohler's um, videos a while back. And that's when kind of my alarm bells went off. People may buy 100, 200, 300 pound, uh, pounds of, let's say, lettuce seed and let's say China. 
Once it gets here, they can sell it to you or wherever they bought it from. China might have sold it to another country and then that country sold it to them. But a lot of this has been coming from the country direct. There is nothing wrong with the food seeds, let's say, coming from China. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but a lot of people don't tell you. So you go buy it from a certain state thinking it's from that state, their farm, their yard, and it's not. They're buying in bulk and packaging it in little packages. This is big companies, little companies, it doesn't matter. There was one I got suspicious of lately, and I called them, and they would not tell me. And that's when I started to figure it out. And what I figured out now is there's multiple things going on with the seeds disappearing. You've got a lot of places, including even the UK, where seeds are starting to run out. You've got seeds starting to run out here. There's a lot. Don't kid yourself. My, a friend of mine, somebody went recently to the hardware store last week, and there were tons of seeds. So it, they haven't run out. I mean, but there's, the amount is starting to slow down because a lot of people are getting into growing stuff now. So they're looking for seeds. But what I'm saying is, you don't always know where they're coming from. All we can do is rely on where they're telling you it's coming from, only to find out later that they are buying in bulk, sitting and repackaging them, whether it's a small mom and pa in the house or a big company, and then they're selling them. Heirloom just means heirloom. It doesn't mean it's from the USA. It, it doesn't mean that. So I now know that some of the companies and some of the people are definitely getting, and it may not even be all their seats, might be a small amount of seats, are getting them from different countries. So I do not, I have never bought anything as far as seats from China. I have nothing on my property that's from any other country except for maybe a fig tree that somebody gave me, I'm going to say 10 years ago, because he was born and raised in Croatia, came here after World War II, and he owns a home in Croatia, and he goes back and forth, and years and years ago, long time ago, he brought a cutting back of a fig tree from Croatia, and when he came over to visit Gary and I, he brought us a piece, little piece, five inch piece of cutting from, Cro that, from his tree in his backyard here, in Southern California, he brought a piece, and we now have that beautiful tree. It's a massive tree that grows real purple, red inside figs. And it's our neighborhood sheriff just doing a pass by. And that's the only thing that I know of. But what I was trying to make a statement is, you would be surprised how much comes from where. We are a country that doesn't produce a lot of stuff anymore. Thank goodness we do produce a lot of seeds, but not everything is coming from there. And there was somebody that I was saying, John Kohler had on, that he went to their house and interviewed that they were getting their seeds from China because they felt it was better, but they were repackaging them and selling them here. And you may not know where originally they came from. And that's one of other people too. That's all I was making a statement. And that's why a lot of people can't get seeds right now. Some of them that I used to buy from, simple stuff, little stuff, celery and different things, they're shut down. Uh, I don't know why. They shut down the moment this happened. Now, could, did they find out they couldn't get the amount that they were getting before? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the shutdown is. But I do know that a lot of stuff has been coming from there and other places, but mainly there because they have big farms and they sell seed in bulk. So that's basically it. But I have never, I have never gone online and bought anything. And if you watch my videos, you have seen that I always say, even the products I buy, I, they may be made in China. I can't help that because unfortunately the United States does not make a lot of stuff anymore. You can't get solar uh, fountain kits that are made in the United States, but they're here in the United States because the U.S. bought them. I always say check the shipping date, and when it says you're getting it on a certain date, make sure you're getting it within two weeks, because if you're getting it in a month or two, then it's not coming from there. It may say it's coming from here, but it's not, because that's how you can tell on the shipping date what they, that they give you. So if you buy something, let's say on the 10th, you better get it by the 20th. If it says, because they have to tell you online when you're getting it, you're getting it in two months, then 
there in the United States, but they're ordering it from another country shipping it out. And that was the statement I made. Again, I have never bought any seeds. Nothing wrong with it. Some people do and they love it, but I will, I not, I do not. I buy stuff only from the United States as far as seed. I want, I don't even buy that much anymore because I collect my own. And that was another statement that girl had said on one of these videos I watched that don't collect your own because they're not that good. I don't know about that. But I'm not here to debate anybody because we all do what will work for us. And what works for me is I do a lot of cuttings off my own plants. I buy the seeds that are within the United States no matter what internet service I decide to use or go directly to the seller. So just be aware that sometimes there's certain things that may not come from there. And heirloom does not mean they're from the United States. It's just supposed to mean they're pure. But I have been buying heirloom seeds along with other people that are finding out you can't collect the seeds and get the same product. Lately, I've got talked to a lot of people that grew squash that was heirloom. So did I last year. I only grew zucchini. And when I collected the seed last spring, and collected the seed in the summer and regrew it, it did not grow the same. So something had happened to those and I have heard them talk about that in Australia as well. So with that, that's kind of my finishing thought on that. The main thing right now is let's all get some food growing. Uh, let's get microgreens growing. I'm not sure on the bulk seed. We've got to see what's available. I haven't looked lately. I've been too busy getting stuff done in the garden. I need to do more trimming, more composting and growing right now. So. We'll, we'll work on this. We'll get it all together. And now I've taken my morning coffee into almost 30 minutes. So I'm going to go get stuff done. Let these birds come in and do their thing and wish everybody a wonderful day. And hopefully I can get my lettuce video together and some of my solar ones. We've got to do solar and we've got to do more hummingbirds. Hummingbirds. Oh my gosh. Nests everywhere. You walk through the yard and there's nests everywhere. Have a great day, everybody. I love you all. Take care. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. It's all washed. Well, let me eat a little, and then I'll give you some. Give me a minute. Mmm. Oh, my God. It's so good. Okay. So what do you think of asparagus? No? She's thinking about it. So good. Oh. Off she goes. Yep. It was a keeper.